Amadeus makes the experience of travel better for everyone everywhere by inspiring innovation, partnerships, and responsibility to people, places, and planet. Our technology powers the travel and tourism industry, inspiring more open ways of working, more connected ways of thinking, centered around the traveler. Our open platform connects the global travel and hospitality ecosystem from startups to big industry players and governments too. Together, redesigning the travel of tomorrow. Amadeus, it's how travel works. Visit us to know more, amadeus.com. Welcome to another episode of the Skift India podcast. I'm your host, Peden Doma Bhutia. And today we have a very special guest with us, an advocate for accessible travel in India. She has been a true trailblazer in making travel inclusive for all. Please join me in welcoming Neha Arora, founder at Planet Able to the podcast. We are thrilled to have you here, Neha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Padam, for such a nice introduction. Glad to be here. Uh, so, Neha, to kick things off, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, what inspired you to become an advocate for inclusive travel? I think if I have to become uh, an advocate for uh, inclusion, I was born to it, into it. Uh, so both my parents are persons with disabilities and uh, my father is blind and mother is a wheelchair user. And what got me into travel was because I never went for a holiday as a child. And my parents, who are in their 70s and 80s now, they never went for a holiday until a few years ago. So uh, I was very naive to think that um, money was the issue and that's why we were not traveling. Uh, so when I started earning, the first thing was to do was to plan and organize a family holiday only to realize that it's the inaccessibility, insensitivity, and the prejudice of the society we live in is the challenge uh, why we never traveled. And uh, after a series of some uh, not so good experiences led me into the space of inclusive travel because I wanted to travel with my parents and that's, that's incredibly I wanted inspiring, other people yeah. like me. I know that in our earlier discussions, you know, when we've spoken earlier, too. you've spoken about how, you know, accessible travel is often misinterpreted as, you know, just setting up a few wheelchair ramps and then having those accessible toilets. But, you know, how can, how can accessible travel go beyond uh, physical accommodations? How can we uh, try and foster a holistic approach to inclusivity in travel, ensuring that, you know, everyone's needs are met and that's also beyond the physical infrastructure? Sure. So, th see, the starting point is mm -hmm. to understand that disability is not just being a wheelchair user. Right. So only 10 to 12 percent of disabled people use wheelchairs. The rest of the disabled population has other kinds of accessibility needs. So they could be um, uh, blind, deaf, autistic, have any other psychosocial, cognitive, sensory, intellectual or hidden disability for that matter. So their accessibility needs would be completely different. So realizing this fact that uh, Disability comes in various forms, visible or invisible, is the starting point uh, of, uh, you know, uh, creating accommodations and accessibility for travelers with all types of disabilities. And and do you see that? Do you see that happening increasingly, or is it not happening at the rate that it should be happening? It's it is not happening uh, at the rate it should be happening, and. It's increasing, but it's very, very, I mean, it's so slow that you don't even realize it. And because the, the awareness about accessibility for the diverse set of users is not there. Even it's not just for India or a developing country. Uh, it is even in Western nations where uh, still there, the conversation is about wheelchair accessibility and yes, digital accessibility. That has really taken up a fast pace across uh, uh, developed nations, but 
when we talk about hidden disabilities, it's still not there. It hasn't found its way into tourism at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for Neha, that for that to happen, I think I think we need to go a little bit deeper down. Uh, do you think that there is a need? You know, there are so many hospitality and tourism institutes, and I don't mm -hmm. see uh, anything much. Uh, I mean, I can't claim to say that I've seen it all, but I don't see mm -hmm. many of them have inclusive tourism in their curriculum. So, do you think that uh, including that uh, into the curriculum of these institutes would help? Of course. I mean, when you said you haven't seen many, there is none, by the way. So uh, <laughs> across the world, it hasn't found its way into any institution for that matter. So um, first we have to, like, you know, had our schools been inclusive, where disabled and non-disabled children study together, we won't be sitting in a problem state that we are today as a world, right? Because... Uh, when mm -hmm. you start your education and when you sit with diverse set of people, like it's representation, right? You live in a diverse and you uh, learn in a diverse uh, environment, then you will, whatever you go, go forward and build into the world, you will always have inclusion in your mind because you have lived that through your friends, your colleagues and your classmates for that matter. So one, in these institutions, not about even the course, they are not students with disabilities also who are studying these courses. So we're, like there are very few percentage of students who with disabilities who are studying in tourism and hospitality schools. And the more representation that we see in there, uh, I think the more we will, someone's uh, bulb would lighten up and they'll say, okay, yeah, we need to have this course also because these people also need to travel. Uh, so we need to have a, a very holistic approach about representation of persons with disabilities in the industry in various aspects and in these schools or uh, in any curriculum for that matter. It needs to be taught. I mean, when I started, I had to really train the whole industry, whomsoever we were working with, and sensitize them towards the needs of travelers with disabilities. So that I shouldn't have been doing. When you, when you, when you, talk, when you talk about training, Neha, yeah. so uh, what is the kind of training, uh, you know, when you talk, uh, talk about training uh, some mm -hmm. of them, what yeah. is the kind of training that you impart? Can you, can you talk a little bit about that as well? Sure. So like to start with, uh, your verbal language, right, uh, is the starting point. What words are to use, what language do you use, how to address someone with a disability, whether you use a person first language like a person with disability, or you use an identity focused language with a disabled person. Or there are so many euphemisms around in the world today, differently able, specially able, people of determination, the young John and all of that. I mean, what language do you use and not to offend anyone, right? It starts from there. And how do you communicate with them? So how would you communicate with a deaf person if they are, have checked into a hotel? How would they uh, manage room service, right? Uh, because they cannot use the phone. And how would a blind person navigate around the hotel by themselves? How would mm -hmm. you help them uh, at the buffet breakfast? So they are very, at various touch points of the customer journey, the traveler's journey, there is a, a training that needs to be imparted. How do you assist them? And then how to get over mm -hmm. your prejudice like, uh, about it. What is the body language that you use while communicating with a wheelchair user? So all of these aspects is what we covered in our uh, training and sensitization. Uh -huh. uh, so Neha, you you spoke about training um so uh, but uh, i wanted to understand from you do you think that the industry is investing the time and effort into this um and uh, of course india does have a law in place to provide for equal mm -hmm. opportunities you know but yeah. i think mm -hmm. there is um, there is a great uh, distance that we need to as far as implementation and enforcement is concerned there seem to be, yeah. uh, you know, significant challenges in that. Yeah, absolutely. See, uh, the industry, I'll start from about eight years ago when I started, 
So the hotel said, they do not travel. Why are you even bothered about them? I'm like, people with disabilities don't travel because you're not accessible. It's a catch-22. So it's, uh, it, it, we have to start from there. They uh, Four-star and five-star have one disabled-friendly room. I mean, wheelchair accessible, let me be specific. And they have made that for compliance sake, for star rating, because that's a mandate by the law. But they, none of them have it mentioned on even on their website that they have a disabled-friendly room because they don't even consider it as a market. Over the years, like, you know, as we have given business to them, as they have realized guests with disabilities thing with them, and actually spending almost 30% more money than an average non-disabled traveler, then they are slowly realizing, okay, Perhaps there is there is a potential here, and some of our long-term partners are actually buying into it that they want to go all the way in to become accessible for guests with disabilities. But still, there is a, a, a kind of resistance and prejudice. Like, do disabled people really have the money to spend? Amadeus makes the experience of travel better for everyone everywhere by inspiring innovation, partnerships, and responsibility to people, places, and planet. Our technology powers the travel and tourism industry, inspiring more open ways of working, more connected ways of thinking, centered around the traveler. Our open platform connects the global travel and hospitality ecosystem from startups to big industry players and governments too. Together, redesigning the travel of tomorrow. Amadeus, it's how travel works. Visit us to know more, amadeus.com. Uh, and, uh, you know, just just so that you're talking about, you know, you talked about the fact that some people said that, you know, they do not travel. Uh, you know, there was a study that had said that accessible tourism is a significant emerging market. And it's expected yeah. to generate almost about 90 billion by 2025. So for mm -hmm. all those naysayers saying that they don't travel, I think that's 90 billion is enough money for them to oh, yeah. you know, take a look and try to. Yeah. Correct. And, like, and, uh, uh, the... uh, of course, Neha. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Please go. Yeah. So I was just mentioning uh, uh, statistics of wheelchair user travelers for U.S., uh, they spent about $58 billion in accessible travel, I think, in 2018 or 2019 by uh, a study done by uh, an organization there. So that's the money we are talking about. And these are just wheelchair users. Uh -huh. uh, of course, so, they have, it's clear still, that I, there's a lot of work to be done, right? Um, I mean, yeah. If, um, yeah. But, but can you give us an overview of the current state of inclusive travel in India? Okay, I wish I had better, better news about that. But um, even <laughs> though we have a very good disability law, uh, which was implemented in 2017, okay, it's already been mm -hmm. six years. Uh, but little has been done about the implementation aspect of it. It's a very good law, like you have the Americans with Disability Act in the U.S. that gives, you know, the, a disabled person the power to actually uh, uh, file a case against an establishment or a destination if it's not accessible to their needs. But the implementation has been a very, very big challenge. Even if you see uh, the, the older buildings getting accessible, it's like, oh, we made a ramp, the checkbox, it's done, right? Uh, we made a toilet, which is sometimes used as a storeroom, yeah, or not clean enough. Uh, but we have it uh, as a check mark that we have done it, right? We are still there. And uh, if you look at the various uh, uh, points of customer journey, like transportation for that matter, we don't have accessible rail transport and uh, or road tran intercity road transport. 
um, by air is the only way you can travel. And there also, there are bad experiences that people keep happening, whether the wheelchair is destroyed or an autistic person is denied boarding or um, uh, a deafblind person is not allowed to travel alone, things like that. And they are not even uh, implementing the ARIMP codes uh, while they are making the bookings. The online travel websites, for that matter, they remain inaccessible. Uh, the travel content that we that has been created in huge numbers every day, it remains inaccessible for people who are blind, deaf, or have autism, for that matter, or cognitive disabilities. The the awareness about that you can make your travel content accessible is not even there. We are not in conversation about it. And um, similarly, the lack of information, mm -hmm. like the hotels are not mentioning that they have an accessible room on the website. So that's the first thing that a disabled person needs to know, whether they can go and book at a hotel. If you're not giving them an opportunity, the first bit of information, how would they come and give you the business that they want to give? So, and when you talk about the monuments for that matter, I mean, uh, there is, they are segregated. Some can come under state, some come under uh, central government, some come under ASI. So it's like, who is going to take the responsibility? They do audit, right? Or like compliance, say, oh, we did an accessibility audit. Okay, but what after that? What are you doing for after the audit? Are you making any changes? Then after that, are you making any review audit that you have done the right changes? It's, we are not doing any of it. We are still at the auditing stage wherever we are even working. Sanitation, I mean, this is such an important aspect of... Uh, any person for that matter. And when we talk of disabled people, it becomes another big challenge. People stop drinking water if they're a wheelchair user, if they have to go and travel. And uh, the, it's so difficult to find uh, unisex washrooms. Like I have stepped into men's washrooms so many times with my father, by the way. So it, it's, we are very um, like, uh, I wish I had better news to say. I mean, the same is with the accommodations for that matter. Only four star and above you can rely on for accessibility. And sometimes they are also, um, they haven't done it right. I'm sitting at a hotel, five star hotel right now for a conference and the ramps are like uh, mountainous ramps out here. And uh, so what about affordability for uh, a large part of people who want to travel but cannot afford a four or five star. We are not talking about it. So the challenge is huge and the resolution is still a long way to go. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a very concerning issue, Niha. I've just been listening to your litany of woes. But uh, it's, also, it's also great to know that there are advocates like you that are working towards making some change in it. And of course, if anybody uh, is listening to it, of course, this is a great potential market for India to capture because India, as it mm -hmm. is, is looking to grow its inbound numbers. You know, we're struggling to reach 10 million uh, tourists. And if we try mm -hmm. to, if we try to tap into this market really well, we should, do you think that we would be one of the first uh, destinations to do a good job of it? Because I don't, I, from what you've said, I don't think any destination has been doing too good a job of it. Yeah, I mean, I think we have a huge potential because India is such a wonderful destination for the world to explore and everyone wants to come. They are kind of haunted by the idea of, oh, it's not accessible. I cannot go. There are too many people. It's just too scary. The fear of the unknown uh, that what to expect is just too strong for a country like India. Uh, it's overwhelming. So if we do the job correctly and we make it accessible, we can actually surpass the world in terms of uh, being an accessible tourism destination. And I'm not saying go ahead and do it all across the country. We can start small. I mean, the, the best thing about India is because it's state-wise distributed. One small state can actually take up the lead, become a model state, become accessible for all, uh, and then 
set up an example for other states to follow. I mean, we have the resources, we have the the human resource, the financial resource to make it happen. We are the tech hub of the world. Come on, and. Uh, the the world comes for technology to us, but when it comes to assistive technologies and having technological interventions in hospitality um, and tourism for persons with disabilities, we haven't even got there. I mean, it, it's such a huge uh, opportunity that uh, we are sitting on, and I just wonder why we haven't even uh, like uh, tapped into it and. Like just to add to it, even the ministry, I mean, very sorry to say, last year, after all of these years, they did release some accessible tourism guidelines for review. Uh, it was a very long document and uh, not from a practical perspective. We gave them pro bono the whole tourism guidelines for inclusion. Now both the documents are nowhere to be seen. It's been more than a year. So even if you know there are resources available, they have to get there into implementing. We gave it for like pro bono, completely free to them. I, so we I have the hope potential the to be a listening, and you know they take some initiative towards this because I think I think Amen. what you are speaking is uh, it's not just about making uh, everything accessible, but it's also about India trying to tap into a new uh, market, new source market that can work wonders yeah. for the inbound tourism industry as well. Um, Neha, you spoke about uh, you know you spoke about helping the ministry, which was pro bono. Can you also share uh, you know some of the initiatives or projects that you've been involved in to promote uh, inclusive travel in India? Sure. So, see, when we started, because uh, India, this industry did not exist, so we kind of became a destination developer and an ecosystem enabler, like developing the destinations, auditing them, and making them temporarily accessible, and giving recommendation to the uh, local authorities at each place that what changes you can make. Some bought in like the idea of it and did make changes. And I'm really grateful, thankful for them. Some of the couple of resorts actually made themselves accessible for us uh, when we reached out to them and offered them that, would you do this for us? Uh, but uh, now we are also looking at creating a standardized framework which people can adopt. Like we'll, we are going to uh, give it to the industry for free. Like it's a framework which is harmonized for developed and developing nations. Uh, because any standard that you see, we, the world is talking about sustainable tourism. But accessibility hasn't made its way into sustainable tourism, strangely. Uh, uh, because uh, how can you have sustainability without accessibility, I wonder. Uh, but yeah, so when we are talking about it, we want to mainstream it and we want to give it to the industry for free and uh, working with tourism boards. And uh, we have also onboarded few of the hotel chains we have, on, we have been working with to run the pilot for implementation who will become the first ever in the world to become certified uh, hotels for all types of disabilities. And uh, then I think the like, I believe that would actually help a lot in creating um, like a competition into the tourism industry that they are missing out on some uh, big business. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones, the early adopters uh, would be the winners because they would get the, uh, the mileage of being ahead of uh, the others. So yeah, so that is what we have been trying to do. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy the way it is going. That's, that's fantastic work. Uh, that's thank fantastic. You. And uh, thank you for sharing your insights and experiences today, Niha. And of course, and for and thank you for your inspiring work in making travel accessible and inclusive for all. I'm just trying my bit, but we have to do this together. I mean, the industry and the people and the society, because everyone would be affected by it at some some time in their lifetime, whether temporarily or permanently, uh, whether by old age or an accident or a newborn. 
So I think we need to build an inclusive world which can be explored and experienced by everyone equitably. Absolutely, absolutely. Completely agree with whatever you've said today. And uh, <clears throat> to our listeners, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Skift India podcast. If you've enjoyed today's episode, remember to subscribe to the Skift India podcast on your favorite listening app and do share it with others. Until next time, happy travels. And remember, the world is for everyone to explore. Thank you so much. This has been the Skift India Travel Podcast. Thank you for listening.